Now you may or may not feel like you've been to the point where you can't take back your past mistakes, but we're going to show you exactly how you can find redemption no matter what you've done in life. Welcome back, my friend, to another episode of Mindset Mover. Today, I have a very good friend, Joey Piper, a.k.a. Yak Boy Fresh. Joey is a nationally known recording artist. He's been on two nationwide tours around the U.S., and he was living in Hollywood for quite some time and moved back here to Hazelwood to be with his family and to build his personal brain. Now, Joey, dude, tell me, dude, how, how did you find your redemption? I think the beginning was um, realizing like I was at war with myself on uh, not having it figured out, like and seeing people. I really, I really wasn't envy, you know, wasn't envying them, like I wasn't envious at all. But the day I figured out that when you realize you'll probably never have it figured out, is when I was like, damn, I think I got it figured out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it gets deep, man. It gets real deep on because find, you know, finding redemption. It's a never, it's a never ending cycle, and you have to realize that. And once you realize that, that's a start. You know, knowing you're not going to hit a finish line because, like, once you stop growing or learning, you're dying. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta, you gotta want to change. And there's gonna be, you gotta look for the signs where it's like, I think it's time to change. And you're gonna, once you change, you're gonna realize there are so many other signs too change but everything happens for a reason man so absolutely not and I want to dig deep on that because you before you found this redemption you were a, you still are a nationally rec known recording artist but you were heavily into drinking and partying and living that whole lifestyle now you totally turned your whole entire lifestyle on and you're a completely different man not a different man but you evolved tell me a little bit more about that backstory so like with you saying different man like it's totally different dude like I'm it's night and day, it's like boy, man, you know what I'm saying? And I'm man, and I said this in one of my Facebook video videos, I'm man enough now to say that I wasn't a man through then. You know, like at that point in my life, like I was just, it was all trial, error, trial, error, and I didn't know what was going on. Like I kicked it, you know, we're some North County boys, dude. Like I was, I'm always screaming, I'm Hazelwood, not Hollywood, but I'm in Hollywood, so I'm, you know, I'm repping and I was just going buck, and I got a five year old daughter, so, you know, the whole time, as I'm doing this, you know, I'm feeling like this is my purpose, but I realized that it was just preparation to what really my purpose is. So like me drinking and kicking it and, you know, like it was, it was amazing, you know, and it, I'll be the, you know, and we'll get probably more into it, like how, you know, spiritual and like, you know, I found God and everything, but they even say, you know, my sin was great, but your love is greater as in with, you know, my relationship with God now, but it was it was every single night, different city, whatever we wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like, we were on tour with Bone Thugs and Harmony for the whole year. Crazy Bone, like, Busy Bone, we're kicking it, you know what I'm saying? Didn't pay for nothing for real. Um, but it got to the point where when I came home, you know, I'm not going to fake it or nothing like that and act like I changed like that. Something told me to go home. You know, go back to your roots, go back to your roots. And I didn't want to at first at all. Because I was like, what? This is my purpose. What do you mean? You know? And it's not my purpose, but it was happening on purpose. Like I said, preparation to it. But June 30th coming up, man, there'll be one year no drinking. And, like, I probably will never drink again. I always joke around with my fiance, like, oh, I might have a glass of wine on a wedding day, da, da, da. But, and I, I'm not saying that, you know, um, I don't want to say, you know, Partying isn't bad, you know, because you get so caught up in the, you know, you start doing it, and then it's fun, and you keep doing it, and then it becomes a comfort zone and a habit that you don't even think it's, you don't even know that what you're doing wrong, you know what I'm saying? So now it's like, I don't miss it because my, my mindset is so on the bigger prize, you know what I'm saying, in life, which is just holding it down for my family and my daughter, showing my daughter like this role model and if I could drink without not trusting myself, because I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what this mindset would go to, and I don't miss the old me at all, so I just choose not to drink. So I don't want anybody to think like, oh, you drink. Because I have people that are like scared to drink around me and stuff. I'm like, bro, you can drink a six-pack around me, I ain't tripping. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, you are normal when you drink a six-pack. 
I drink a six pack and I'm gonna go sneak off and hit like five to ten shots, come back stupid, and it's it's game on. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, and it's just in my blood. Like, like I'm not a drinker. Some people just aren't drinkers. You know what I'm saying? And I just love the sober mindset now. It's crazy, bro. Like totally. But it's a net. Like trust me, the temptation's always there. You know what I'm saying? Like absolutely. The first two months, you know, going out and trying to be. I was the life of the party, and Pastor David at Faith Church said, uh, "You can still be the life of the party, but just don't let the party intoxicate you." I was like, "Ooh, that's hot." <laughs> you know, I like that. And I'm, you know, I'm just now getting to the point where I can go out and kick it. But I leave definitely really early because there's that time where everybody hits that point, and I'm like, oh, "I got a dip," because I don't care who you are. If you're not drunk and they're drunk, you want to punch somebody in the face. Right. Yeah. Right. No, dude, I could totally relate to that so much because. I, there was a point in time in my life, you know, I, I was doing the re, doing the recording music and stuff and, and loving every bit of it, all aspects of it, and got to the party, and that led to me to doing heavier drugs like heroin, crack, like sc scraping crumbs off the ground right. to feed my crack habit, and that led me to prison, and I got back out and got off the drugs, but it wasn't totally done party drinking, and I went back to prison 20 days before my sons were born. And that's when I really found like my purpose. Like you talked about it, and it prepared me. I had to sit here and miss my sons being born. I'm like, damn, what the fuck am I doing with my right. life? You know, like, is this is this real? And once you hone in on that purpose, it just gives you you see things differently. You got a new burst, of, like unlimited energy. And I'm not saying like if you party and stuff, that's a bad thing or nothing. You know, because like you said, some people can party and do their thing. That's cool, but. People like us, it's not us, and there's a lot of people out there that just can't live that lifestyle because it's not meant for them, and it leads to bad and bad things, man. Well, it's also by like, people are like always want want to know like, you know, why am I not, you know, doing anything with my life, and are you doing anything to do something with the life? Like we all have the same <laughs> amount of time, so like, we're all the same. Like me, like I literally. Just imagine on the outside looking in, like I sometimes think about like what people really think, which I don't care. But I went from being in Hollywood with superstars and, you know, like in the intro, we didn't even say I was signed with Nelly. Like I literally, and I'm only 25 years old. I probably have done more than anyone would do, some will ever do in their life. But I say that humbly, because, like humble because it made me so humble because I realized I'm only 25. And I came home, took a job in sales. Like, bro, I've never had no cubicle job. Like I always say, it's unusual. Um, me working in a cubicle, I'm stepping out the box before I'm in one at my funeral. And like I listened to it the other day, I was like, I'm in a cubicle right now. But like when I pulled up, I was like, man, I treat my cubicle like my own corporation. Anything you do, it's all about the way you think of it. This dude today was like, man, ain't nobody want to buy that. I said, I bet you I can sell it. Because it's the way you think. You think it into existence and you're going to do whatever you want to do. It's like that positive attitude and making everything become a habit. So when we're talking drinking and partying, like, you're wasting time. What is that doing? You know, unless you're, like, that's trying to, that's your profession, you know what I'm saying? But, like, people need to understand, like, and everybody ain't going to be rich millionaires and all that. Like, and I get caught up sometimes, like, I work at YP.com, the Yellow Pages. I sell advertisements. A lot of people are like, that yellow page is that book. Like, we do Google search and all that stuff, and, you know, I'm learning. And rather than being mad that I'm there, like I said, I treat my cubicle like my corporation. And I'm trusting God's will, and I'm like, hold up. He, he doesn't have me here because he's, he's like, hey, you, you don't need to be in Hollywood. He, said, he, he put me out to Hollywood and said, yeah, you're a superstar, but you can't do it your way. You need me, because if you didn't need me, if you could do it your way, why would you need me? Right, so I even said it the other day. I was just freestyling. I was like, uh, I used to live my way or the highway, but since I got sober, I realized on that highway I was broke down on the side of the shoulder. When we come back, we're gonna dive even deeper on how you can find redemption. Welcome back, my friend. We are about to dive deeper on how you can find redemption. Now, Joey, tell me, man, out of everything that you can do. What's the very best investment that you can make in yourself? Well, I mean, you just said it best is like investing in yourself because time is definitely our biggest asset. It's like, I said it to my homeboy the other day, Meech. 
and he started recording because he was like, man, this is so tight. Like, the things that we think are corny, like, like at lunch breaks, right? <clears throat> and I'm flooding myself in this. I put podcast on. I pull out this book. Like, I'm a fiend now of good, like, motivational books. But we really adapt to who we're around, what we're around, the, like, the lingo. Like, everything you pick up on, you really do. The vibe at your work, like... You have to control the vibe around you, and that's what I'm so big on, like, at my house, at my job, at, in the street, anywhere I'm at, I'm controlling my vibe. Like, you can't pop my bubble. And, like, I have a routine now where it's, like, every day or once a week, I read, you know, a book, and I will highlight it, and then I'll go back to the book and take a picture of the book or the things I highlighted and send it to my Dropbox, and I'll study the notes. Like, I'm so big on learning now that... If you really want to find redemption for real, like, you, it takes six, people say 21 days, but I don't care. It takes 66 days to create a habit, okay? So, you have to literally take the corny things, right? Because once you start taking what, you don't really think they're corny, you just think other people are going to think you're corny for doing it. Like me sitting there reading a book. That's a good way of putting it. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing corny. Nothing's corny. Just like nothing's stupid in life, and nothing. There's no so no such thing as whack music. Like there is a. It's it's it for you. You know, people just trip off what other people think, and I don't care what anybody thinks. So the corniness turns into change, and the change turns into confidence. Period. So I'm sitting there listening to podcasts. I have my music on or my headphones on, and people are thinking he's probably listening to his music. Which, you know, a year ago, I'd probably been listening to trap music and everything. But now it's a straight positive podcast, and I'm, like, finding mentors that, you know, um, it's not just spiritual, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I'm focusing on my one thing, and my one thing right now is change. And you've got to really just make sure you're doing it. And if anybody around you, you can be the positive influence, but some people aren't like that. My gal, fiance, it's crazy to say, but she told me it. She said, Joey, everybody ain't like you. And I'm like... You know, you're right, you know, because I'm such a go-getter. I mean, that's how I ended up in L.A. and everything, too. So one thing I'm real big on now is, like, my patience because I really don't have patience for a lot of people. But you have to surround yourself by people. And it sounds so corny, dude. Like, surround yourself by people that are doing what you want to do. It's real, though. Yeah. It is real. And if you don't know nobody that's doing what you're going to do, you better go find somebody. You might... Anything you want, it's not in your comfort zone. It's not, man. It's not right there in front of you. Sometimes you are so blinded to see that you have everything you need. Yes. But you got to step out the comfort zone to grab it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this camera's right here. But that's not my comfort zone. i got to get up and go grab it. And once you just start, the hardest part is to just start. Period. <laughs> and then once you go, it's like, I was tripping off that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was, I was scared of that. Fear, man. Like, you got to face the fear. And I, you know, what is it? It's a uh, fear. Oh, my manager told me. Fear of failure? No. Oh, I'm glad you said failure, though, because I love failing. Yeah. Like, I tell my daughter, I said, you either win or you learn. learn. You never lose. Think smarter, not harder, Dad. It's so funny. But when uh, my manager looked at me, he was like, fear. Um, face... False evidence appearing real? No, oh, I forget what it is. It's just like, um, face everything and rise, or face everything and run, or um, something like that. But it's like, fear, man. You got to step up to it. You got to, because it's not going to kill you. I tell people on the phone, like, come on, man, you need to do this advertising. And I don't know, bro. It's not going to kill you. It's not a disease, you know what I'm saying? But one thing I'm really big on, like I said, I ramble, I know that. Lose the battle to win the war. Losing this battle might be you don't like what you're doing, you don't like where you're at. But if you if you deep down know that this is what you want, lose that battle, that pain that you're going through. Like there's purpose in your pain. Lose the battle to win that war. I tell customers all that all the time. If I know this package is gonna work, look man, that little, you know, three hundred hours a month you're gonna spend, lose that little battle right now to win the war in the long run. You know what I'm saying? Or you're just gonna throw the white flag in before you even face the battle you know what I'm saying like it's crazy man and no absolutely I totally get that and and I've dealt with this in the, in my past I've gotten really good at it now having that fear of failure being 
scared to step out of your comfort zone because you're scared that you're going to fail. I mean, so many people are conditioned, like, they're scared to fail because they're scared of what their dad might think of them, or they don't want to look like a loser in front of their parents, or they're scared to fail because they think that if they try something new and they fail, that's going to put them back and set them back. But really, you got to recondition it up here and start thinking of failure as a learning process. It's it's like when we're born into this world, can were you able to walk right away and talk right in born world? You had to fall thousands, like right thousands of times. Just yeah. like riding a bike, man. Like Craig Rochelle, he's a he's a pastor, but he has a real big leadership podcast that I was listening to on the way here, dude. And like that's what he and he was like, it might sound corny as well, but like it's just like you know, falling off your bike, get back up, you're going. Like you gotta fall face first, man. And like the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna have a little bruise on your little pretty boy face. But <laughs> yeah, who cares, man? Like what do you want? Go get it because literally, to you don't gotta be great. You know what I'm saying? To start, you just gotta start, and then you can be great. But, but you gotta start to get ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just gotta fall in love with. Like, if if you're struggling, like you should smile, because the setbacks you can't focus on them. Like, every setback is just a setup for a huge comeback if you put your mind like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm so passionate about this stuff, man, because a year ago. I was not this dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was Mr. Go-Go Gadget Ratchet. No, Mr. Overdose on the Holy Ghost for real. <laughs> and I'm flooding myself in just scriptures, and I used to flood myself in just liquor. And I'm, I got a song coming out on the 30th called, you know, to Hold Me Back. And it's explaining, like, you know, I'm still kicking it with the same people that was holding me back. But I needed to just change me right quick. Change the way I live, change the way I think. I'm still the same me, you know what I'm saying? I just changed my habits because, you know, we our decisions, you know, it doesn't make what we're, you know, your habits make your life, man. And people really need to get hipped on that, like, $2 Tuesday, <laughs> that's a habit. You form that as a habit. That, you don't even think twice. Now, every day is a habit of reading. Every day is a habit of Tuesday night service. I went from... $2 Tuesday, you know, turned up to Tuesday service of getting my word in and motivation and inspiration and, you know, a lot of people's excuses like the money tied in at, at church. And it's like, I ain't giving, you know, rich pastors. And look, man, you're giving for the wrong reasons then, for real. Once that leaves your hand, you're paying God's, you know, 10% back. He's like, you keep his 90. <laughs> like, but that's a whole day. We'll probably do that. I want to do a topic on that, but... Amen, amen. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to show you how you can find redemption. Welcome back to the final segment of how you can find redemption. Joey, let's drop some fire right here, man. This is the, the last segment right here. What, what, what can you tell someone that's out there that feels like they done messed up so much in life and that they cannot find redemption... What would you tell somebody to how they could find redemption? Well, I mean, for real, dude, kind of like I said, man, like you literally have to change your whole way, your whole lifestyle. And it might seem like it's it, it never can come true, but I don't care. If, if I can, you can, like they can. If if I can go from being this on the outside looking in, living the American dream little superstar, you know, like you can change your mindset. Forget on the outside. Forget all that. Like, you can change what's on your inside, you, but you got to keep doing it. You And you'll soon adapt to just that person. You'll be, you're, you'll be so surprised how you start thinking and how you start, you know, looking just at life. Like, I go outside sometimes and I look and I'm just like, wow. And you'll start feeling grateful, you know, like, but you have to want to change. And I'm not saying you got to stop drinking and all that stuff, man, but like, or kicking it or anything. But be real with yourself. If you're going to be real with anyone, be real with yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and ask, am I doing everything that I can do? And don't be scared to ask for help. Like me, like I'm super big on, if someone hits me up like, hey man, I'm so lost, I need your help. All right, meet me at church. Like it might be for you, it might not. Like you, it's different for everyone. You'll catch that, that wind of the Holy Spirit, dude. Like, and it just helps you guide in the right direction. And like, I'm willing to help anybody that's out there. 
like straight up like just start literally like and don't like I'm saying don't overthink it like I want to change I'm gonna change and stick to it be real with yourself surround yourself by good people and you might think like okay well, what is even good people who's good people people that are trying to change like you like we were just talking off the camera it's good to surround myself with people that's trying to ground like you, dog. Like, there's probably probably the stuff we talk off camera needs to be the stuff that's on camera because <laughs> it's like it's the same thing as like this. It's just we know the camera's rolling, so right. it's like oh, we gotta be not nah, man. Like this is who we are off and on, but it's like we don't have it all figured out. We know that, and we're trying to make sure that we show you guys it's okay. Like I said in the beginning. As soon as you figure it out, figure out that you'll never have it figured out, you're really close to figuring it out. So it's like if you really want to change and find redemption, and if you think, oh my God, I messed up in life so much, it's like you got to forgive yourself and stop flying first class on a guilt trip because that's going to go nowhere. The destination you land ain't going to be cool. Like take a step back, analyze, refresh, forgive yourself. We got one life. And it's short, but it could be, it could be so long, you know, like plan, plot, plot your next move. You know, I'm reading a lot of books, like hit me up and ask me what type of book should I read? Like, don't think it's corny to read or corny to ask for help or corny for anything. And like I said, I'm 25. I got a five-year-old daughter. Like, just because I'm young, that I've been through it straight up. Like, I don't think age really matters. It's like the the knowledge you take in and do you care do, do you care about changing and like I said I, I, like I I try to make sure because everybody thinks like I'm this like oh he found God and he's done and I don't care what people think man but I just want them to know I'm still just like them it's just I figured it out mm -hmm. that I'll never have it figured out and it's so simple and I'm never going to be who I'm not, man. Like, I'm Joey. I always tell people, like, yeah, I'm yeah, you already know. That's what YAC stands for. But I'm JJ. What's JJ? Just Joey. Because at the end of the day, I am just Joey. Everybody knows me as YAC, but I'm no different than anybody else. I just have trialed and erred, and now I'm taking all my trials and making them, turning them to triumphs, and I'm making something out of it like everybody has everyone's a role model you know don't I tell like parents like I'm real big on this now with my daughter don't don't trip if they're not you know listening worry that they're always watching you know what I'm saying and like and I know I'm rambling on but don't stress like I said all the struggle because I, I was listening to this quote on the way home it was like a uh, worry doesn't eliminate the sorrow from tomorrow but the strength that you have today. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't miss out on tomorrow because of yesterday's BS. You know what I'm saying? So, there's so much stuff in it, but it's so simple. So, I don't want to, like, over, you know, I'm probably saying the same thing just in different ways, but lose the battle right now. Suffer. Struggle. But smile through the struggle because there's purpose in your pain and fall in love with the process because the end results are just going to be that much better. Amen. Straight up. Hey man, dude, thank you so much for dropping on in here today to drop some knowledge bombs with our audience here, showing you how you can find redemption. Joey, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way they can find me on social media? It's all at Yak Boy Fresh, except my Facebook is someone from Syria hacked it and they got it to like 500,000, but they're posting weird stuff. I can't get it back. Facebook, I hope somebody on Facebook can be hit them, somebody up that works there and get my page back. But Instagram, um, Twitter, I'm not really on Twitter, I'll be honored. Um, you can go to hiphopbibles.com and just you know hit me through. You can uh, subscribe to that, leave an email through there. But Joey Yak Peeper, P-I-E-P-E-R, and literally that's my personal page. But like I said, man, like I like I like using that page though because it's me. Like I know we have to have our business and artist page, but I love having my personal one and people can hit the follow and then direct message me and I got the 5,000 limit, but I'm starting to erase everybody that really ain't rocking with me. And I'll add you. I'll delete somebody and add you. <laughs> right on, right on. If you found this video useful, share it on Facebook. And if you're part of any personal development groups, you can share it with your friends there. And make sure that you hit that subscribe icon and tap the bell notifications. That way, you don't miss anything. Thank you for tuning in. Now go find your redemption. Do that. Yay. Yeah.